Please be seated. Good afternoon. I am Jeff Barksdale, Provost and Chief Academic Officer for Columbia Southern University, and I would like to welcome you to the 2015 Commencement Ceremony. We are here to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates and would, are pleased to have family and friends in attendance today who have supported our graduates through their journey at CSU. I would also like to welcome our honored guests, our faculty, and staff. At this time, I hereby declare the 2015 commencement ceremony to be open. I would now like to take a moment to introduce our platform party. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. First, we have Vice Provost for Student Affairs, Dr. Scott Rounds. Board of Trustees Chairman, Forney Howard. President, Robert Mays. Keynote Speaker, General Dan K. McNeil. Senior Vice President, Chantel Cooley. Reverend Buford Lipscomb. Registrar, Rachel Ferris. Would you all join me in applauding these platform members? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Mayor of the City of Orange Beach, Tony Keenan. So I was coming in this morning, somebody handed me the three keys to speaking, be brilliant, be brief, and be gone. <laughs> so in the immortal words of meatloaf, two out of three ain't bad. Thank you all for having me here. It's my honor and privilege to be a part of your day. I, um, I've been there, and I understand the sacrifice that you guys have put in to get where you are. I want to welcome and thank General McNeil for being here. I appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate what you stand for. And I wish we had a million more like you. The CSU family, greatest guys in the world. I know them personally. I've known them for some time. For those of you who don't know them, take my word for it. They're good, God-fearing folks that really do care about the graduates and who they, who they help along this path. I want to do want to recognize uh, our state legislator Steve McMillan for being here. Thank you, Steve. I um, how many folks have never been to South Alabama or been in this area? <laughs> I bet you all thought we were barefoot on dirt roads with dirty diapered babies, right? <laughs> Tell the truth. Yes, sir. Well, we're very proud of our city. Very proud. Uh, we are one of the safest and most cleanest cities in the country and we absolutely have the most beautiful beaches in the world so I hope you get to enjoy what we have to offer and have time to uh, to eat at our many restaurants um, going off script slightly I want to allude back to what I said earlier at 18 I went off to school by the time I was 18 and a half I'd flunked out you know how that is chasing ladies hot rods in the dog track and I was a real loser so I want to tell you how much I appreciate those of you who have gone back to school. I will digress slightly. I'm not insinuating that you're losers, okay? <laughs> but I know the sacrifice and what you put in to going back with family, for your love of your family, and the dedication to get where you are today. And I pray there's a whole bunch of you who become our General McNeils in the future. But again... I'm just happy to be here. My cell phone number is 251-747-8282, 747-8282. If there's anything we can do better or anything we can do to make your stay better, call me. Call me if you want to know where to go eat. <laughs> call me if you want to know where not to go eat. <laughs> and I said this earlier, but don't eat in Gulf Shores. So. 
But again, my privilege for being here. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy your stay. Thank you, Mayor Keenan. I now have the honor of introducing our next speaker, Representative Steve McMillan, who is from Gulf Shores and represents the 95th District of Alabama. Representative McMillan was, the, was first elected to the Alabama State Legislature in 1980 and has served as the representative of this area continuously since that time. He is one of the longest serving representatives in the State Legislature. Representative McMillan received his BA from Auburn and works with sales management and investment real estate throughout or through McMillan and Associates. He is a member of numerous chambers of commerce, civil, community, and professional organizations, numerous legislative committees, including the vice chair of the Ways and Means Education Committee and chairman of the Joint Legislative Committee on State Parks. He and his wife, Gail, are the parents of two children and five grandchildren. Please welcome Representative Steve McMillan. I'll give you my number, but don't call me unless you got a good party. <laughs> when, when Dr. Wilkins called and asked me to participate, I asked him what I should say, and he said, well, we're going to be celebrating graduation. We're going to be congratulating everybody. And we want to try to motivate everybody. And he said, other than that, just be brief. <laughs> so I'm going to be brief and motivate you at the same time. As you go through life, whatever you go, keep your eye on the donut, not on the hole. <laughs> Good luck to all of you. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. A little bit of comedy there, right? Well, we are here for you, graduates, and my job is to get you pumped up, but I think you might already be pumped up, so I need a little feedback. Are you pumped up? All right, that sounds really good. You know, I was thinking back, uh, this is a very emotional graduation for me because, you know, I don't know what it is, but my family, you know, I could go back many, many years when we started university. I had no idea it would be like this. And we were just trying to survive and wanted to change some lives. So we got some staff together. We, we, we got some faculty together. And we all said, hey, let's go change some more lives. Let's get some people educated and move them forward. And you know, now that legacy of mine and my family is passed on to you. And so now it's your legacy. And I pass it on to you to now you go forward. You go change some lives. And you make a difference. Amen? All right. Now let's get back to script. It's an honor to have with us today the Naval Air Technical Training Center Performing Unit and one of your fellow graduates, Reverend Jeffrey Howe, singing the National Anthem. Please stand for the Parade of Colors and the National Anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming? 
And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. And now Reverend Buford Lipscomb from Liberty Church, Pensacola, Florida, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we lift up, uh, first of all, the privilege of being Americans and living in this great nation. We thank you for all of these that have kept us free and keep us safe that are here today, who've served and, and do serve, Lord, uh, that's in this gathering. Father, we lift up the proceedings of this, the 2015 graduation exercises of Columbia Southern University and all of these soon to be graduates before us today. We thank you for their diligence, their commitment. We thank you for the support and love of each of their families, Lord, and all that this means to them today. Lord, we ask you to, be, to bless us with your presence as we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Today, I have the honor of introducing to you my brother, CSU President Robert Mays. Robert has been president since 2005, assuming this role after the unexpected death of our father. I can say with total confidence that he has done a supreme job of leading CSU these last 10 years. Robert is fully committed to CSU's mission and vision, which is to change and improve lives through higher education, to enable students to maximize uh, and improve lives professionally and personally, and to serve communities in which they live and work. Robert and I have worked together now for over 20 years, and I am so proud of what he has accomplished and excited to see him continue to lead CSU into the future. Please join me in welcoming your president, President Robert Mays. Job with that. Well, welcome graduates, welcome honored guests, faculty and staff, and especially welcome General McNeil. We are honored, sir, to have you here with us today. We thank you graduates for choosing Columbia Southern University. We know you had a lot of choices. And today, between both ceremony, ceremonies, we are honored to have 732 graduates in attendance and approximately 3,800 family, friends, and guests. And I'd like to welcome all those also attending online via live video stream. CSU has a very strong student body of more than 29,000 active students, online learners, and over 40,000 alumni. And since last year's commencement, over 6,500 students have graduated from CSU degree programs. CSU students are assisted by over 1,000 CSU faculty and staff who strive to provide exceptional, exceptional service every day. Many CSU students are associated with one of our more than 2,700 learning partners, which are municipalities, companies, and organizations across the country. So graduates, you have traveled today from 44 different states, 15 countries to celebrate this milestone in your life. And today we recognize your hard work and determination and your dedication to earning your degree. Let's please give them all a round of applause. Uh, 
approximately 44% of CSU students are active military or veterans, and we're very proud to be among the top institutions serving the United States military. So veterans and active duty military members who are in attendance as a graduate or a family member or a friend or a guest, please stand so that we may recognize you. Wow. Thank you. And some of CSU's top programs serve the needs of those in law enforcement and the fire service and EMS and other emergency services. So as a result, a large number of our students are public safety personnel and first responders. So to all those who are in public safety or first responders, would you please stand so we can recognize you. Thank you, very impressive. So Columbia Southern wouldn't be what it is without the incredible team of individuals we've put together. We have an, an amazing leadership team, an amazing group of executives and wonderful staff who are there every day to fulfill students' requests. Uh, many are out front, but many here today, if, if you would, please stand and let's also recognize them. Thank you. And most importantly, sitting to your left at the front of the auditorium are many of the CSU faculty members and your academic program leaders. It is our faculty who have the most significant interaction with our students. More than anyone, they have contributed to laying the foundation for an exceptional CSU learning experience. So faculty, please stand so that we may recognize you. Thank you. And to recognize and honor outstanding achievements and contributions by a CSU faculty member, the Robert G. Mays Senior Distinguished Faculty of the Year Award was established. And I'm proud to announce that the recipient of this award is Professor Heather Farragut. Professor Farragut joined Columbia Southern University faculty in 2013 as an adjunct in sociology. Uh, professor and became full-time faculty in November 2014. She teaches Introduction to Sociology and Cultural Geography. Her research areas include community, environment, and globalization. She has worked and volunteered in membership services and other administrative positions in many different nonprofit organizations over the past 15 years, including YMCA, American Cancer Society, Mothers, and more. She earned her BA in Anthropology and Sociology and International Relations and East Asian Studies from Ursinus College. She obtained a Master's in Nonprofit Management in 2006 from Regis University and completed a Master's in Sociology from Sam Houston State University in 2012. Heather lives in beautiful East Tennessee with her husband and twin 15-year-old sons. She enjoys tennis, traveling, and volunteering in the community. Professor Farragut is unable to be with us today in person, but she is watching via the live stream. So let us show her appreciation. Let's give her a round of applause. So thank you for choosing CSU and celebrating this great day with us. God bless and go Knights. Our next guest is General Dan K. McNeil. General McNeil, a native of North Carolina, retired from the United States Army in 2008 after 40 years of active service. He and his family made the Fayetteville, Fort Bragg, North Carolina area home and made many friends throughout a number of tours at Fort Bragg. He, he has a distinguished record of service with notable assignments as Commanding General, 82nd Airborne Division, Commanding General, 18th Airborne Corps at Fort Bragg. Commanding General, United States Army Forces Command, Fort McPherson, Georgia. And a final assignment overseas as Commander, International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan. General McNeil is a highly decorated former senior Army leader with combat experience in Vietnam, Panama, Iraq, and Afghanistan. 
He has a bachelor's of science degree and an honorary doctorate from North Carolina State University and is a graduate of the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College and the Army War College. Please welcome General Dan K. McNeil. Well, good afternoon, and thank you, Chantel, for that generous introduction. Hua, Semper Fi, Anchors Away, Aim High, Semper Paratus. Any coasters? No coasties? Okay. I was an American soldier for 40 years. Even though now in retired status, I am yet an American soldier. I will always be an American soldier. And for those of you who are serving or have served, thank you. The nation cannot say too many times how much she appreciates what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do. And I offer that gratitude knowing full well that wearing the uniform of America's armed forces is not the only way to serve the United States of America. Service to one's nation, community, and fellow man is a noble calling. And we truly appreciate all who serve to make our republic a safe and secure beacon for those who live in darkness or under tyranny. And our thanks to all for allowing Maureen and I to share in this wonderful event. Wonderful in that there are doubtless are some fathers or mothers or spouses or grandparents who sit here and wonder that their loved one has remained sufficiently focused to have achieved all the requirements of graduation. Indeed, the prayers of parents, grandparents, spouses, families, and friends have been answered today. And therein lies my first charge to you. Remember to thank without qualification all those who have supported you for the journey you have completed today and for the fantastic voyage upon which you will embark tomorrow. I'm a little more than 51 years past my high school graduation and I choose that event to make a point because I did not participate in my university graduation and that, by the way, was a mistake which I regret to this day. The distance of time has obscured my vision of the name of the gentleman who spoke at our commencement exercise. My recollection is that he was an official from the public school hierarchy. And I remember that he spoke too long for the venue of the unair conditioned antiquated auditorium in which we sat that evening. So before I lose your attention, allow me to give you three of life's immutable truths that I wish our graduation speaker had given us. First, always contact, call, write, text, your mother or father or grandmother or grandfather every day. Second, hand write and mail as soon as practical after this exercise a thank you note to the person or persons most responsible for helping you to get to where you are today. And third, use sunscreen every day. <laughs> or if I might borrow from my friend Bill McRaven, a retired admiral and presently the University of Texas System president, who said in a graduation speech a few years ago, if you really want to thank those who supported you, Pick up your clothes, make up your bed, and clean the bathroom every day. <laughs> In other words, if you want to continue to be successful, make the routine things happen routinely. As trite as it might seem, I would be disingenuous if I did not offer that you are completing these newly acquired educational credentials in a period of difficult times. A little less than two decades ago, globalization was the hot term. It was where the action was. 
Globalization has led us to a global economy, which now has cooled off in a most disconcerting way. Extremists are using radical acts to attack, undermine, and destroy the freedoms most of the world community enjoys. The polarization of the American political process is causing many Americans, it has produced, I should say, a level of dysfunction that has caused many Americans to lose hope and to despair of ever attaining the proverbial American dream. But where's the news? If you had accomplished your educational goals in 1930, what was your future? The Great Depression was just beginning. The American economy had all but collapsed. America, the most bountiful of nations, could not feed its people. Decent, hardworking folk were forced from homes and land that they no longer could pay for. Jobs evaporated almost overnight. The headlines read, America is in decline. Or what if you'd been in the class finishing its studies in the summer of 1940? The winds of war blew in Europe. A military dictatorship threatened the peace and prosperity of all of Asia and the Pacific Rim. The American economy was not fully recovered from the Great Depression. The American political body stridently was divided between those who saw it as our nation's destiny to stop the advance of tyranny and injustice and those who thought it best to leave our friends and allies to their own fates. To be sure, the times of your lives have been and will continue to be challenging, but the times of your lives will not be impossible. The class of 1930 would not accept that America, with all its natural resources, could not provide food, shelter, and jobs for its people. They did something about it. The class of 1940 would not accept a world in which the community of free nations and basic human dignity would be fatally threatened by the boot hills of petty tyrants. They did something about it. Now it is your turn. Do something about it. In my, my reckoning, you have taken the first steps. You have made yourself better educated. To me, that is tantamount to moving to a position of more responsibility and more accountability. You are moving into a position to lead. Our nation needs sound leadership. You can and should be a leader in our nation. You can lead us through the difficult times we face. Because of some of the significant leadership positions I have held in the past, some have inferred I am an expert on leadership. I am not. Rather, I am a postgraduate student in the art and science of leadership. Likely, I always will be that graduate student. When it comes to leadership, there are no bodies of empirical work to support the thesis, certain people are born with leadership ability. I was not. To be sure, another of life's immutable truths is one cannot learn to lead before one has learned to follow. What leadership ability I possess, I learned. And so was the case with most of the truly capable leaders for whom I had the privilege of the obligation to serve. Leadership has changed, is changing, and will change the globe. The leadership that changes the world can be good or it can be bad. Just as the changes imposed by leadership upon the world can be good or bad. Global change has been constant in the time of my life and as near as I am able to determine in my frequent study of history, it changed constantly before the time of my life. Would it be a stretch to say the globe will change in the time after my life? I think not. I think that premise is solid. Leadership, your personal leadership can change your life. I will leave it up to you to decide what kind of leadership and when, where, and how it should be applied. 
A good leader always maintains awareness of the environment in which he or she must lead. A few years back, I read an opinion that offered at the intersection of globalization, environmental calamity, resource scarcity, demographic strain, and international political military competition lies a complex interconnected future that will be filled with persistent conflict and instability. One need not read past any front page of any major newspaper on any day to realize the veracity of that opinion. In 1973, I was a student at the Infantry Captain's Career Course at Fort Benning, Georgia. Someone introduced me to a book by Anton Myra, which had been published in 1968. It was a work of fiction titled, Once an Eagle. Fiction it might well be, but it is a good treatise on the study of leadership. Sam Damon and Courtney Massengale, the two protagonists, sometimes antagonists, are the main characters. And from the author's pen flows two distinct styles of leadership. Now everyone fancies themselves a Sam Damon style of leader, calm, encouraging, collected, self-effacing. Contrast that with Courtney Massengale style leaders, leaders who are thought to be callous, pompous, and shallow, not the kind of characteristics that come forth in a self-evaluation. Many, myself among them, think the book is a thinly veiled account of Douglas MacArthur, the so-called American Caesar, and Robert Eichelberger, a MacArthur subordinate who was one of America's unsung heroes in World War II and a man who spent the final years of his life as a resident of my home state, the great state of North Carolina. And there were yet others who said the book was more about politics, Democrats versus Republicans. Well, it's not my intent to increase your reading list, although the book is a good one. But one can take from this book two points. First, there are all kinds of leaders. And in the most stressful of situations, it would seem all kinds of leaders are needed to produce the right kinds of solutions for complex issues. Secondly, the type of leader you think you are is not the type of leader you are until all those below you, beside you, and above you say you are that type of leader. Now there's a MacArthur Eichelberger anecdote from the South Pacific in the early part of the Allied offensive operation to retake the Japanese conquered islands in World War II. Historians are not in agreement about what occurred and MacArthur always denied it, as he would have. While a student at the Army War College, I researched and wrote a thesis about Eichelberger's operations in the Philippines. And my conclusion is, I am certain the episode occurred and reasonably certain it played out the way Eichelberger and his chief of staff, Clovis Byers, described it. It goes something like this. Eichelberger summoned, or excuse me, MacArthur summoned Eichelberger to the Supreme Headquarters in Australia. Clovis Byers accompanied Eichelberger. MacArthur began by describing to the two generals the strategic situation as he saw it. He expressed dismay at the loss of momentum in his drive to the east, and he opined that the island of Buna basically had stopped the attack. He then told Eichelberger he was giving him a new command, which placed the forces on Buna under Eichelberger's directions. MacArthur then gave a simple order, Bob, take Buna or don't come back alive. That goes for you too, buyers. Now in today's lexicon, you probably couldn't sell that. That would be called a mission type order. Simple, cold, but effective nonetheless. And by many opinions, that was MacArthur. In turn, Eichelberger went to Buna. He walked the front lines. 
in several regimental areas, exposing himself frequently to enemy fire, and thereby demonstrating to the American troops the enemy before them was not superhuman. And soon, partly because of Eichelberger's inspired leadership, the offensive operation was again underway and enjoying much success under Bob Eichelberger. Leading from the front, leading by personal example, morally and physically courageous, all agree that was Eichelberger. But make no mistake in your judgment, the Allies needed MacArthur in the Pacific, and likewise, MacArthur needed Eichelberger in his command. Two different styles of leadership, both successful in the environments in which they respectively perceived themselves to be. One can make an argument that organizations today, emergency responders, military, medical, business, education, or whatever, are far more complex than those of decades or so ago. Mostly that is true. But it is likely also true that the positive characteristics of leaders of yesterday are the same as those required of today's leaders. A few years back, I participated in a high-level executive leadership development course run by a private sector company. There were some extremely successful business executives involved in this training, and it struck me yet again that learning to lead is a continuous process of education. The gentleman who led this training offered what he called useful findings from research on leadership. And if you will, permit me to recall a few of those points. Trust is an essential ingredient in high-performing organizations. Trust is a multi-way line, and it runs not only up, but down and laterally. Trust must be earned, and it must be maintained. Trusted leaders are effective leaders. So how do leaders earn trust? They explain standards of performance and priorities for their organizations. They articulate vision and clearly define goals. They listen. They can handle bad news. They back their subordinates. They are decisive. They share the risk and the hardships. When the organization performs well, trusted leaders share the spotlight. Not only do they teach, but trusted leaders make the effort to learn continuously in our ever-changing world. Trusted leaders are men and women of integrity, people who keep the promises they make and indeed make only promises they know they can keep. Trusted leaders are good leaders. Good leaders have a bias for action. Get after it. They are active voice verb, vice passive voice verb people. Whatever their organizations are required to do, they aim to do it the best it can be done. Excellence in performance is a guiding light for good leaders. If you're in it to win, your leadership tenure likely will be long and prosperous. If you're in it to win regardless of the cost, your short-term gains will be a pathway to short leadership tenure. To me, character and leadership almost seem interchangeable terms. Good leaders are grounded morally, physically, ethically, and spiritually. Values will come from those bases. Complex, high-performance organizations require leaders that can go the distance. People who get tough when the road ahead becomes treacherous. Ones who will last through the trials and tribulations. Remember, if it was going to be easy, somebody else would be doing it. At the request of our one and only son, Murray and I were at the Marine Corps Marathon a few years ago. But in truth, his invitation to us was a euphemism for us to be his bag holders and to pick up the cost of his hotel room and the cost of food and beer for him and his running mates after the race. 
But we learned some lessons from this experience. As we stood at the start line, we watched the runners pass, tens of thousands of them. Everybody was laughing, smiling, and frolicking as they crossed the start line. Some hours later, we stood at the finish line at the top of a long hill going by the Marine Corps Memorial and the Dutch Carillion. Uh, the story was much different there. Those who had done their preparation and had themselves at a good level of fitness mostly were still smiling and running when 26.2 miles later they crossed the finish line. On the other hand, the nonverbal communications of others perhaps those whose preparation was not as adequate, were not so upbeat. The message is clear. Life is a long haul for most. Prepare yourself for it. Should misfortune deny you a long life, then it does not really matter. But the odds seem to favor a long life for most of us. I urge you, plan accordingly. Now, I've never met a leader who readily admitted to an ethical behavior. So one can conclude all leaders consider themselves ethical in their performance. Yet, when have you last looked at a major printed news source in the first page or two, or listened to a major news broadcast in the first 10 minutes or so of airtime, and not read or heard of something about a leader or manager in business, government, education, religion, medicine, or military who is alleged to have committed unethical acts. Every profession has ethics and ethos and even laws. Good leaders not only are aware of the red lines imposed by ethics, they do not wittingly cross them. Spiritual well-being is essential for leaders. I'm neither trying to sell a particular religion nor offend religious sensibilities. What I know about most of the world's great faiths is that each one has some concept of an entity bigger than oneself. In my view, such a concept reminds one that you are always accountable. It keeps you from getting bigger than yourself. And if there is anything that will take you to ruin, it is ego. You know the deal. The rules do not apply to me. An unbridled ego is Lorelei in the Rhine. Every leader must be equipped with a proverbial moral compass. That part of one's psyche which guides when there's not a clear picture. When the information available for decisions and actions is ambiguous at best when you are sailing uncharted waters. Remember this, if it is too good to be true, it likely is. If it does not look, feel, or smell right, likely it is not right. And here's another, if you do not want it on the front page of the New York Times, do not say it, write it, email it, tweet it, Facebook it, text it, or do it. Nevertheless, I offer this to you. I encourage you to trust your instincts. Your organization most probably did not give you leadership or management authority through a casual process. Experience, education, intellect, all affect your instincts. And remember this, you can do something to increase your capacity in all three. Success belongs to the bold, they say. MacArthur was bold. George Patton was one of the boldest, most historians will say. But I also temper that with keep this in mind. George Armstrong Custer, before, he, before 1876, was admired for his audacious and bold leadership. In the United States of America, Education is both a right and a privilege. Again, I salute you for the hard work and dedication you have put forth to permit you to sit where you are sitting today. Without question, the mantle of leadership, blown in by the winds of hope and faith, 
will fall gently upon your shoulders. Tomorrow, stride forward with confidence. You have every tool you need. Go out there and make a difference. In the later years of the Great Depression, an American playwright penned some words that I believe are an appropriate closing for my part in this event. In the time of your life, live so that in that good time, there shall be no ugliness or death for yourself or for any life that your life touches. Seek goodness everywhere, and when it is found, bring it out of its hiding place and let it be free and unashamed. Place in matter and flesh the least of the values, for these are things that hold death and must pass away. Discover in all things that which shines and is beyond corruption. Encourage virtue in whatever heart it may have been driven into secrecy and sorrow by the shame and terror of the world. Ignore the obvious, for it is unworthy of the clear eye and the kindly heart. Be the inferior of no man, nor of any man the superior. Remember that every man is a variation of yourself. No man's guilt is not yours, nor is any man's innocence a thing apart. Despise evil and ungodliness, but not men of ungodliness or evil. These you must try to understand. Have no shame in being kindly and gentle, but if the time comes, in the time of your life to kill, kill the killers and have no regret. In the time of your life, live so that in that wondrous time you shall not add to the misery and sorrow of the world, but smile to the infinite delight and mystery of it. Thank you for your attention. Go out and lead. God bless America. Thank you, General McNeil, for your inspirational words. Will the master's, the master's degree candidates please rise? <laughs> Chairman Howard, these candidates have completed all the requirements for the master's degree. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the master's degree be conferred upon them at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree and all the rights and privileges that come with it. Please move your tassel from the right to the left of your cap as a sign to all of this great achievement. I congratulate and applaud you. Will each candidate for the master's degree please come forward as your name is called to receive your diploma.
Ronald Barry Hill. Zanya Janexia Leoval. Andrew Biddle. Sharice Chairman Sullivan. Karen Loman Boudreau. Lisa K. Russell. Catherine Burgess. Karen A. Buchanan. Stephanie D. Neal. Kimberly Eugenia Robinson. Marjorie Wilson. Natalie Higgins. Tiffany Davis. Jarda M. Bradford. Jose A. Rosario. Magdalene Sormicum. Darren Rollins. Ike Igbakwe. Marilyn S. Knighton. Stephen Lewis Holmes. Rayshawn King. Jamise LaKenya McClinton. Deborah Rodriguez. Patrick Austin. Kristen Gibson. Jennifer J. Hagdorn. Valerie M. Joyner. Bilapan Sinacone. Sheila Sellers. Shante Sellers. Amy Elizabeth Grassel. Kimberly Katrina Wyckoff. Abraham Fritzal Aban. Joshua Jesse Cujo Odabil. Rhonda Kimball. Cheryl Sue Earhart. David Olayori Papola. Helen Vander Grinton. Deborah Desiree Douglas. Roshonda S. Boast. Caitlin Marie Guerrero. Lindsay Jones. Harriet Michelle Pierce Roberts. Joan Marie Gernick Clemens. Anisha Angel August. Siobhan Bailey Jones. Gina M. Castrello. Christy Lynn Pompa. Clarissa D. Bosworth. Celia Patricia Gregory. Jennifer Jean Henderson. Pamela R. Gradford. Summer Dawn Wells. 
Chelsea Marie Tikotsky. Martha Marlena Thompson. Danielle Bradley Studemeyer. Henry E. Jerkins. Melinda Brothers. Jason A. Schumann. Vincent Robert James. Rika Latisse Hamilton. Fidelia Nicholson. William Troy Dyer. Tamika Deshawn Clemens. Jennifer K. Mueller. Heather Marie McGee. Michael J. Sadler. Aikisha LaShawn Willis. Edward J. Maddox. Ashley Nicole Copeland. Robert Hunter Butterton. Carla Deanne Smith. Jason A. Morrow. Ronald D. Lawson. Daryl Smith. Katrina Miriam Crandall. Kimberly Calandra Sellers. Erica Lynn Beck. Stephen A. Wilson. Tyrone M. Price. Gregory Kendall. Shamika Renice McCoy. Natasha M. Weeks. Russell D. Cameron. Alice I. Cottrell. Clayton M. Nahr. Michael Joseph Shiro. Joshina Yvette Jameson. Hadia Sabreem Barnes. Suba Prashanth. Miosoti Torres. Eva Nieves. Timothy M. Bullard. David E. Couch, Jr. Robert J. Howell. Terrence T. Brown. Christopher D. Pelkey, Sr. Christopher Brian Harris. Andrew Preston Whited. Charles E. Simmons, Jr. Richard Keith Harned. Richard Damante. Viola Bryant Wallace. Michelle Davis. Rosella Dozier. Terry Denise Glanton. Vanessa L. Black. 
Michelle Lynn Waldman. Latoya Renee Hightower. John B. Tippett, Jr. Charlene Stein. Cynthia C. Peña, Florida. Karen Lynn Smith. Jeffrey Mark Stone. Marshall E. Pittman. Sherman Leroy Price. Mukhtar Jallo. Roberto Zapata. Jerry Dean Honeycutt, Jr. Jamika N. Pittman. Corey Matthews. Fashanda Trinice Sams. Brandy Waynes Hamilton. Mark E. Landers. M. Sonny Bradford. Byron Edward Dulon. Brent Roger Hicks. Joshua Adam Goldberg. Carla D. Thomas. Amy Ann Sims. Alicia Michelle Martin. Kevin Paul McGee. Benjamin J. Woodrow. Thomas W. Alexander, Jr. Robert C. Hooker. Cash Christopher. Sybil Marie Little. Derek J. Brown. Octavius K. Edwards. Angela O'Quinn. Let's have one more round of applause for our master's degree students. Will the bachelor's degree candidates please rise? The gold cords worn by our bachelor's degree candidates are in honor of earning 
a GPA of 3.5 or higher, we applaud you and your accomplishment. <laughs> Chairman Howard, these candidates have completed all of the requirements for the bachelor's degree. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the bachelor's degree be conferred upon these candidates at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the bachelor's degree and all the rights and privileges that come with it. Please move your tassel from the left to the right side of your cap as a sign to all of this great achievement. I congratulate and applaud you. Will each candidate for the bachelor's degree please come forward as your name is called to receive your diploma. William Lee Coleman III. <laughs> Megan Snyder. <laughs> Brian Lee Patterson, magna cum laude. Larry W. Riddle, summa cum laude. Chris Danielson, summa cum laude. Savina Reynolds Lewis. William Ike Deese. Kayla Marie Godijan, magna cum laude. Keith Epperson. Krista Felton Quick, cum laude. Felicia Nicole Bell. Kalila Broom. Amy L. Kramer, magna cum laude. Mark Anthony Blanco, cum laude. Stephanie Stafford. Brian Downing. Jeffrey Allen Truman, magna cum laude. Howell W. Leftwick III, cum laude. Bill W. Atkins. Arthur A. Lampert, summa cum laude. Eric B. Biswell, cum laude. Dana L. Overton Cummins, cum laude. Roxanne Cooper. Christopher S. Baldwin, cum laude. Anna Bierman Storks, magna cum laude. 
Jason Lee Hendricks, summa cum laude. Heather Dawn Southworth, magna cum laude. Gail Goodchild. Gracie E. Hill Kohlinger. Neil F. Rubel Cum Laude. Lisa M. Thomas. David Nicholas Dawkins, Magna Cum Laude. Amber Kristen Candela Cooney, Summa Cum Laude. Michelle Sherry Johnson. Peggy Ann Atkins, Magna Cum Laude. Tracy Cox Wallace. Lynn Edmund Huey III, Cum Laude. Caden Montel Wiltz. Sonia Glass. Alfonso D. Baldwin, magna cum laude. Lacey Youngblood, magna cum laude. Jordan Albers, summa cum laude. Timothy Duane Morgan, summa cum laude. Jason Shirecult, cum laude. James Allen Moore, magna cum laude. Christopher B. Rule, magna cum laude. Philip Wayne Purnell, cum laude. Stephen Crutchfield, summa cum laude. Keith Johnson. William G. Simmons, Jr., magna cum laude. Siobhan Merchant, cum laude. Michael Anthony Hovius, magna cum laude. Johnny L. Potts, III. Robert Brian Harkins, magna cum laude. Stephen D. Brownlee. Jimmy Tom Muller II, cum, summa cum laude. Michael W. Lowe, cum laude. Kenneth J. Layton, summa cum laude. Cornelius Jerome Morgan, magna cum laude. Gary Nels Rosine, magna cum laude. Kevin J. Como, summa cum laude. Michael Craig Maples. Joseph S. Inez, summa cum laude. Jamie A. Maxwell, magna cum laude. Clarence D. Haygood, magna cum laude. Robert Hurlbert. Robert Forrest. Brandon Blythe, magna cum laude. Shane Fleming, magna cum laude. Rene Valdez. Summa cum laude. Benny Lee Davis, magna cum laude. Mark D. Netke, summa cum laude. Aisha Augustus Griffin. Fernando Diaz, cum laude. 
Jennifer Bowers. Jocelyn A. McKinley, magna cum laude. Cindy Varney Bray, magna cum laude. Don Michelle Lafferty. Misha Ann Cox. Ronald Livingston. Keith Jerome Welch. Janelle Elizabeth Nettles. Lonnie Smith Jr., cum laude. Jarvis M. Holyfield. Krista D. Branham. Bartholomew Reed, cum laude. Amaris Crawford. Shantiera Desiree Valentine. Brittany Pittman. Veronica Nicole Allen. Donald L. Clavier, cum laude. <laughs> Teresa Catree Richardson. Tammy M. Cox, cum laude. Andrew Jemison. Shanira Brandon Ofield, cum laude. Yolanda Jean Edwards. <laughs> William Rhett Bradford, magna cum laude. Keisha Katundra Gartman, cum laude. Brandon Pettit, magna cum laude. Daryl Keith Hunter. James C. Nickerson. Randall Casey McLamory, cum laude. Kenneth D. Lewis, magna cum laude. Jared Wayne Lawley. Clifford Del Carlo, cum laude. Randall Blaine Taylor, summa cum laude. Frank Robert Bellini, summa cum laude. Nicholas Larson, magna cum laude. Donnie William Lafferty. Megan Renee Wagstaff, magna cum laude. Margie M. Boyce, cum laude. Charmel Moven, cum laude. Jonathan Maxwell, magna cum laude. Sherry Owen, summa cum laude. Donna D. Taylor. Yvette Denise Boyd McClinton. Tammy M. Salmonen. Daniel Poulos, magna cum laude. Dwayne Quincy Clark, Sr. Deborah Harry, magna cum laude. Monique L. Addison, magna cum laude. Oksana Smith. Kineta Monique Sargent. 
Laura Denise Hudson. Jose Padilla. Frederick D. Turner, magna cum laude. Candace M. Davis, cum laude. Ashel Marilyn Bunch, magna cum laude. Tanya R. Olden. Shonda Y. Carter, cum laude. Nichelle Lisa Jones, cum laude. Rhonda Ann Montague, magna cum laude. Tammy Zazel Jean-Pierre, cum laude. Anthony Kanania. Lance Kanania Sr. Shakela Brache Brown. Angela Jacinta Jones. Christopher M. Green. Nakia Lamont Johnson. Corey Reed, magna cum laude. James O'Bannon, Jr. Paula Jo Engel, summa cum laude. Mary Ann Calloway. Rhiannon Apuan, summa cum laude. Tommy L. Weaver. Julia M. Honeycutt. Hassan Banji, cum laude. Samuel I. Amburo. Samantha Kinsey Thomas. Ricky L. Williams, magna cum laude. Christopher Allen, magna cum laude. Terry L. Woodridge, magna cum laude. Willie Maurice Owens, Sr. Ella R. Sizemore, cum laude. Deborah Fryson Green, magna cum laude. Sharon Yvonne Gary. Maureen Boynton, cum laude. Jennifer Lee Price. Edith Santos, magna cum laude. Michelle T. Campbell. Karen Yolanda Lee. Lashanda Richardson. Anthony Thomas, Ooh. cum laude. <laughs> Teva Hardeman. James Matthew Norville. Brandon S. Smith. Antoine Pittman. Shamika Lachey Teague Turner, cum laude. Gary Harold Miller, magna cum laude. Denisha Teague. Thomas Coons, magna cum laude. Stephen L. Osmer, magna cum laude. Dwayne Marcus, magna cum laude. Shakara Louise Brown. Anthony D. Boykin, magna cum laude. Kimberly Nicole Shelton. Renee Medina Luna, cum laude. 
Colleen L. Foster, cum laude. Let's have one more round of applause for our bachelor degree students. Will the associate degree candidates please rise? Chairman Howard. These candidates have completed all of the requirements for the associate degree. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the associate degree be conferred upon these candidates at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the associate degree and all the rights and privileges that come with it. Please move your tassel from the left to the right side of your cap as a sign to all of this great achievement. I congratulate you and applaud you. Will each candidate for the associate degree please come forward as your name is called to receive your diploma. Keith Paradiso. Christopher McGlynn. Tony Michelle Cornett. Anthony J. Blair. Jesse Guillory. Kevin A. Harper, Ernesto Nico Coleman, Patrick L. Perkins, Dianca Z. Jackson, David McAllister III, Brian Anthony Jones, Daniel Tigpen, St 
Steve Alverson. Cherie Antoinette Hagens. Amanda Lachelle Nevins. Renata Ann Clark. Ashley Sargent. Samantha L. Finch. Janice Chevis Wilts. Denise Allen Curry. Sandra Mosley. Rhonda A. Tigpen. Donald Irvin Clark, Jr. Del Palamas. Imani Rogers. Let's have one more round of applause for our associate degree students. So graduates, today we celebrate you and all of your accomplishments. Do not forget the hard work it has taken to get you to this point. This is an impressive milestone you have reached on your journey. Finally, do not forget to thank those of your family, friends, and colleagues who have supported and encouraged you. They have been there waiting for you and wanting to, you to do your best while you've been achieving your best. Make, them, make their wait worthwhile. Make their investment in you as many times over as you can. Graduates, please rise and applaud all of those who have supported you. Please be seated. Thank you and good luck, graduates of the Columbia Southern University Class of 2015. You have earned it. Reverend Buford Lipscomb will now come and deliver the benediction. Congratulations to all of you. And it's just about over. It's just beginning now. Let us pray together. Father, we greatly rejoice with these new graduates of Columbia Southern University. We celebrate with them and their families for this great achievement. And Lord, as we close and we prepare to go from here and each will go back to their respective homes in different states and nations, we just lift each one of them to you, Lord, and we pray, God, that you would direct their paths and. Lord, that they would use the great resource of this newfound education, these degrees, Lord, not just to make money, but to make a difference in their life, in their world, that when they leave here, they will have made a mark, and others would know that they were here. We bless each one of them as they go today, Lord. Pray your blessings on them in Jesus' name. Amen.
Will everyone please stand for the platform recessional? Please remain at your seats. Once again, congratulations, graduates. Please remember to stop by the alumni booth and pick up your gift. On behalf of Columbia Southern University, I applaud you, the graduating class of 2015. This ceremony is now concluded.